90% of your fish are in 10% of the water. Now you can spend time trying to personally survey if you want to, or you can learn to use a fish graph. Today we're talking to pro angler John Hunter about how to use, where to use, and how to protect your fish graph. You may recall John from one of my first episodes of Gearbox Talk. He's a great guy, a good friend, and he's been working with us on Go Wild since the very beginning. I'm going to drop links to our other shows that we've done about fishing, and these are shows with Dean Rojas, Stephen Taylor, and beyond. We've got quite a few of these. If you're into redfish, trout, bass, or something else, I've got something for you. It's a lot of great content, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of it. All right, let's talk some fishing graphs. This is Gearbox Talk with John Hunter. Meet the industry's widest variety of game-changing ammunition. However you shoot and whatever you hunt, fortune favors the prepared. Find your federal premium advantage today. John Hunter, glad to get you in between fishing trips here, man. You've been gone all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been busy. <laughs> you are a road warrior, if I've ever known one. You were just at Lake Murray, heading down to Alabama, right? Yep, Alabama. So, caught you here with just a couple days off, and wow, would have liked to have talked to you about a whole suite of things. Today, we're going to hit just fishing graphs. So, I want to talk to you about this first. Like an unscripted question here is before we even talk about what you're using and how to read these things, talk about what one is, because we're really, this show's often targeted at beginners yep. and you know, may, they may not even understand um, what, what the benefits of this are and what, what information you're looking at and pulling yep. from a fishing graph. Yeah. So it's a graph, fish finder, electronics, chart plotter. Um, there's so many different names for it. Um, but what it is, is a tool to find fish and also help you navigate on the water. These things keep us off of shallow shoals. We know where the deep water is, shallow water is. We know where the how to find the structure with them. They're just they're the most important tool on a fishing boat. I think most people that hear that that don't fish think that you go out in the water and it's like a compass that just tells you like, hey, I think the fish are going to be that direction over yeah. here, fifty feet. It, it's find, not, it doesn't find them for you. <laughs> it's like the name doesn't doesn't entail exactly what it is. Right. But, yeah. All right, so so there's a ton of options on these things. Um, they run from, you know, fairly affordable up to tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. uh, for setups. What are you using? And, and and John's a professional angler, so your your setups probably going to be a little higher end than most yeah. might go into. But people like to know what you yeah. pros are using. So what do you got on your boat? So I have four Lawrence HGS 12s on mine and uh, HGS 12 Lives. Um, it's the highest level Lawrence makes. Yeah, I mean, that's probably not what your average <laughs> angler needs, but I feel like I need them. I also run live sonar. It's called uh, Active Target, which is the most latest technology in the fish finder industry. And uh, it's a must for me when I'm competing against all the other guys who have it. Um, but that's that's what I have. I mean, r you know, retail, if someone had to go walk over to, you know, the store or order order, order on Go Wild or anywhere, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be expensive, but they're honestly worth every penny. I mean, even if I wasn't fishing professionally, I would run a very similar setup to what I have. I might not have four, I might have three, but I would still have a lot of them because they're, they're so useful. You need to have them. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it's, I probably have 13 to $15,000 in, uh, fishing electronics on my boat right now. Yeah. So the thing that comes to mind, people are thinking like, Oh my God, I can't imagine having that on my boat because you know, it's going to break, you know, you need to protect it. What kind of yep. covers and protection are you using on, on your fishing graphs? Yeah, it is important. Um, you don't ever think it's, it can break or it will break until it actually breaks. And then you're hit with that. Oh crap moment. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, so I use Lowrance, uh, and all the brands do, they, uh, they send, uh, covers for when you're trailering. They're a hard, they're like a hard snap on cover that go on and, and cover it up. Um, you want to use those when you're trailing around from lake to lake. But um, I use a product called Graph Glass. I'm a little, uh, dear, a little dear and true to that <laughs> brand. Um, there's one or two others, but Graph Glass was the first brand. Uh, it's a it's just a uh, it's a screen protector, uh, just like you would have tempered glass, like you would have on your iPhone, uh, Android, any phone. Um, and it's a good, thick, little little tempered piece of glass. And what it does, it protects it from lures, rocks. And most of the common thing you hear is a guy fishing on the back of my boat was casting a crankbait or a jig and yeah. bang, smacks, cracks it. And um, these companies, they they won't, you know, if, it, if the graph itself mal malfunctions, they'll replace it. But not if it's a... Uh, they don't cover stupidity. They don't cover stupidity. <laughs> so graph glass, uh, that that's that that's where that comes in in handy we've had so many people send in send in photos of where they you know save their butt so uh 
Yeah. It's been a cool uh, product. And, and we didn't quite say it, but you found a graph glass. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a sponsor. Yeah, like I did. John literally I built did. this product. All right, let's go. So back to the fishing graph product. You know, there's all kinds of different bass anglers from your bank fisherman to kayak to the boat setups, uh, mm-hmm. everything in between what you have. Mm-hmm. At what point should somebody really start to, like, when are you fishing enough to where you need to look at upgrading your your graph? I mean, I would say if you can, I mean, it all, it's all relative, right? right. Um, if you can afford it, then spend the money on them because they're very important. If you're, if you're fishing competitive tournaments, you need it. I mean, you need to just yeah. go ahead and get the highest level you can afford. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my opinion. They, they pay off. Um, if you're fishing for, you know, a couple grand, a tournament, I mean, yeah, you win a couple and they can help you win and they're paid off. Right. I mean, and they're good for years. I mean, it, you know, there's new iPhones that come out every year, but you don't have to buy one of those. You guys are year. upgrading yours every year. Pretty we much, are, right? but, but the technology that Lawrence has now with the exception of the active target, which is a live sonar has been relevant for like three years. I yeah. mean, um, if I still had to run the carbons and I could use the active target, I would, which was a three year old graph, I would. Yeah. I mean, I think most of us, some people like our, our buddy, Chris Glim here goes out and runs mm-hmm. and buys a new iPhone every year. Cause uh-huh. he has to have the iPhone, right? Yep. But most people are going to, you're kind of treating it like that, right? It's mm-hmm. like an every three or four year investment. Two, yep, two to three years. Yeah. Okay. I would say you're going to start losing relevancy after okay. three years for so, sure. So you, you kind of talked earlier about all the things that this captures, you know, you're talking about structure and mm-hmm. you're helping with, it's helping with navigation as water temp. How do you read a fish graph? Yep. So, you know, you have the the GPS portion, um, and then you have the fish finding portion. The GPS portion is pretty straightforward. It shows you where your boat is. It shows you where you're pointing. Show you, you can have a track to show you where you have been. So um, then you also have a map that displays all of the contour lines, drops, breaks, ledges. Um, so that way you know where the high percentage areas are, where to look, and also how to navigate, where to stay away from danger zones on the lake. And then the fish finder portion um, – there's a 2D sonar, which is just a traditional 2D, like you see the colors and the arches. Everyone says, look for the arches. Um, you have that, and then you also have side imaging and down imaging. And that's before uh, live sonar. That was the most you know groundbreaking technology in the past five to seven years. And what that is, it actually projects an image um, of what's below you into the side of you. Now, it isn't cl- like plain as day. Like if you were to get in the boat with me, and we were going on side imaging, I might see two trees and you might see like a block, like, but you have to know how to depict it. And a lot of times is looking at shadows. So when you're looking at your side imaging, there'll be a a track for your boat and then you're seeing both sides um, of the graph and you can actually see a lot of times if there's something out there by seeing if there's a shadow behind it. Mm. Um, and if it's a big object, it'll be pretty obvious, like sunken boats. You see mm-hmm. a lot of people, like if you go past the sunken boat on Simon Jane, it's pretty dang obvious. Yeah. But uh, a small little piece of, you know, brush as big as me or you might not show up, but that could be holding a couple of fish. But if you see that shadow, a lot of times it'll give itself away. So you're looking for disruptive structure though, when yep. you're like anything that's kind of out of the norm that could provide a hiding spot. Road beds, um, rock piles, rock piles show up really well because the bottom's so much harder so it always shows a really like rock piles show up very clear on uh on side imaging how we're kind of answering one of the questions i was going to ask you about what are you looking for how much does that change and it may not change very much for you because uh, mm-hmm. but i'm curious of, of like you know you fish all over the country does that change as you get into different areas or is it pretty much all the same no, you're always looking for harder bottom brush you know just structure for them to live on and a lot of times you look at that structure Um, where there's no other structure, you know, Mm -hmm. so there's nothing else for them to live on, but that, um, and, and a lot of times I just want to touch on what fish look like. And the best way I can explain it is a cotton ball, um, on your down imaging, when you're going over them, they'll look like little cotton balls stacked either around the brush pile on top of the little rock deal you go over, or just on a break on a ledge, they'll look like little cotton balls. Mm -hmm. It's the best way I can explain it. So you know, th- this is kind of like we said earlier, it doesn't tell you where to go find the fish. Still mm-hmm. get tons of acreage on these lakes that you're fishing. I mean, they're mm-hmm. ginormous. It can take hours to get across, right? Mm-hmm. So 
for you though, before you are stopping and starting to use your fish craft, you're, you're traveling, you've got a lot of distance to cover. If you ever see these guys cutting across the water, you're like 60 miles per hour across the water, right? Mm -hmm. What are the points in a lake? Um, we'll, we'll kind of stick to spring. I know it varies in the winter, like spring and summer. What are good spots to start using your fish craft to find areas? Uh, you know, is it docks? Is it points you're working? What are the areas that you want to look at? Yeah. Um, I want to say year round, but you know, in the spring, pretty much from March to, you know, May, you could, you could, um, for the most part, you could probably just not even have to have it because the fish live on the bank. They're shallow. It's all visible cover. We're fishing that tree. We're fishing that little rock point comes out. We're fishing that dock. You know, we're just going down the bank. Um, but winter, summer, um, sometimes fall and sometimes spring in certain places, it, it, it's very important um, because you're, those fish aren't always living right on the bank mm -hmm. everywhere. And so it's a, uh, it's important to find those one-off little pieces of structure that hold the fish because those are the fish that aren't getting fished for 90% of the time. Because most people don't know they're there because they can't see them. Most people go straight to the bank or straight to the dock or straight to the big obvious tree laying in the water, and those things get hit multiple times a day. Those fish see so many presentations, but that fish sitting out there 20 feet on that brush pile that no one else can see. Yeah. That's a dumb fish. That's easy to catch. Yeah. Somebody, I read a quote, and you may even know who said this. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about how 90% of the fish are in 10% of the lake. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to find those areas where everybody else is missing them. Because if they're getting mm -hmm. pressured a lot, it's just like hunting. They're yep. going to, you know, they're not going to be there as much. They, uh, they learn quickly. They're smarter <laughs> than we think. It's, uh, it's incredible. Uh, and, and we've, We've discovered that with this new technology, the active active target, it's live sonar. You can literally it, it you set it to look out eighty feet in front of your trolling motor, wherever your trolling motor is pointing, you can turn it. And it will see out in front of you. So you can cast your bait and it and it shows the water column. You can set it, you know, if it's only twenty feet, set it twenty feet, and you can cast your bait out fifty feet, a two inch swim bait, and watch it on your you mm -hmm. can watch on your screen go down. You can see if there's fish there. Yeah. And you can start reeling it, and you can watch them come up, and it's amazing how many fish are in these lakes. It'll almost make you sick. Like, you used, to, you used to drive to a spot and be like, I wonder how many fish are really down there. Well, now you now you know, <laughs> and you can see it, and it, it, it'll drive you crazy. Yeah, knowing they're there. And, the, knowing and, they, <laughs> and they still won't bite, and they'll, like, follow it. You can see them come up after it, and then they'll just swim away, and you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last thing I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, you mentioned like, Oh, I have four, I could live with three. Um, mm -hmm. I remember the, the setup in Alaska when I went fishing with them, you know, they had them on the back of the boat. There was two in the front, mm -hmm. uh, very different boat setup, but yeah. I mean, tons of different ways that you can use a fishing graph. What are the ways you're like, how are you setting up yep. your screens? And then what are some of the other ways that somebody might think about that setup mm -hmm. and what's important? So the way I have it set up, I have two at the console, where I sit and drive, I have one that I split for side imaging and down imaging. And then I have another unit that I split for my map, my GPS, and then my 2D sonar. I use a very small portion of that. So I use about three quarters of one for two for uh, mapping, a quarter of one for 2D sonar, and then half and half for side imaging and down imaging. And then up front, I have an entire 12 inch unit dedicated purely to my live sonar. Mm -hmm. um, it's important. That's like to have, what you're saying with casting. Yeah, that's it's used so much now. Um, but I mean, everybody, you want that dedicated screen for it. You don't want to be split screening for it. You want you want to get the most pixels. You want to get mm -hmm. the the most clarity. And then my other unit, I use for mapping in two D, which I probably don't need a full big unit for that. But I, I like. Where's I the Where's that fourth unit going? It's up there, up front. It's too. up front. They're too. stacked uh, up gotcha. right up top. Uh, up on top, right on top of each other. All right, and we'll put links to all that in the show notes. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks. man. Yep, no problem. In addition to some links to these fish graphs we talked about, I'm going to drop some links to John's recommended gear in the show notes. I've worked with John and we've got a curated list of quite a bit of, of gear for bass fishing. So we'll share those in the show notes. Remember, if you buy any of this stuff, we're going to make a donation to a camp called Raise Them Outdoors. It's a nonprofit. They actually teach kids to fish. So you can actually support Go Wild. You can support the camp by making that purchase. Thanks for watching with us. Go ahead and click some of those other shows. Keep learning, digesting, and absorbing all that juicy knowledge from Gearbox Talk. But for me, I'm out.